Hi everyone, welcome to day 7. Uh, today's internet connection is very patchy, that's the reason why I'm late. Um, I do not have a stable internet connection. I'm here with my mobile uh, data, so I don't know how, how well it will last, but well, we'll try and we'll see if we can make this work. Uh, just let me know in the chat if you can hear me well and if you can then uh, that would be wonderful I don't know just before the lecture was about to begin I lost my internet connection and then ever since uh, it has not come back yet so no idea if, if it would be back or not but uh, if you can hear me well then please let me know in the in the comments below uh, i'm just trying to figure out if i can get to your comments Okay, so <clears throat> let's see, let's see if we can uh, sustain. I'm okay, let's see. So today what we're going to learn is D4, D6. This is the chapter of today's session. Maybe I won't be able to interact with you much because it's difficult to uh, load on two devices, but I was, you know, what I had promised is that we will look at D4, NF6, C4, E6. And after night, here we looked a lot at night C3 in the previous session. So I, I wanted to look with you on night F3 lines. And uh, Bishop D4, Bogo Indian and D5 is what we are going to see. But I thought it might be a good time to take a small break from classical stuff and look at something interesting, you know, just something uh, nice and uh, which I have used quite a bit as a, as a surprise weapon in the past. Uh, and so that was the idea to actually do this opening, uh, D4, D6. Let's see if I can read the comments. So my my logic is that white has basically two important moves which is c4 here and uh, to which i recommend e5 and the other move is knight to f3 to which i recommend f5 you know uh, it's completely a different chapter altogether playing the dutch but I think it's it's interesting, you know, I, I want to uh, give you a few examples there. E4 is definitely uh, something that D4 players are not comfortable about. Uh, but even if your opponent plays E4, it wouldn't be a problem because we will cover E4, D6, D4 in, uh, in against E4 lines. Yeah. So now I can see a few comments. Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I should make it 360p. Okay. Sure. Let me see if I can change it. I think once you go live, perhaps changing it might not be so easy. What should be the ideal video bitrate? I'm not sure. But okay, right now it looks okay. Let's see if we can. Uh, practical thinking. I did cover Nimzo Indian, but my aim is to give you more options. Uh, not like, okay, this is something that you play. Uh, to, to basically give you, say, four dif different options. And then you can choose what you like. 
this is how usually it works so not everyone is going to play the nimzo indian so first let's begin uh, with one game d4 d6 i think uh, there there are several games that that i have played with this but the one which actually uh, i remember quite a lot and there are two games that i want to show here these two okay uh, so let me just load them up okay this one was played against olga jesenko d4 d6 yeah and if your opponent plays bishop f4 kind of transposes into a uh, london system but i'm not i'm not a big fan of this uh, because to bishop f4 you have a lot of flexibility actually uh, what what you can do mm. maybe knight knight d7 knight f3 and you can go uh, ngf6 and then later on break with c5 already and maybe play g6 bg7 it's it's a normal system i mean london system is something which we should look at later on but let's look at first c4 i played e5 and my opponent uh, who is quite a decent player rated 2184 she played d into e5 and uh, usually when my opponents play this move i'm very happy and i think you too should be because after de queen d8 king d8 i believe that this position is absolutely equal you know uh, so very good position for black and you should just know how to play so you can go c6 f6 bishop e6 knight d7 put your bishop out to c5 or b4 sometimes that goes to e7 sometimes to h6 to f7 and you get a nice position in fact uh, you need a special approach to such positions which i think i like doing it like a incremental approach you are not trying to win the game you are just trying to improve your position bit by bit so my opponent played knight f3 and i played the move f6 which is a decent move knight c3 and now bishop came to e6 attacking this pawn so she went b3 now i went knight d7 bishop b2 c6 and next up was e uh, she went g3 i played the move a5 uh, and this is a typical move so that the knight is now sort of tethered to c3 if it moves somewhere you can instantly go a4 creating more play knight d2 and here i went knight to e7 although i feel knight h6 is a better move you are looking at knight f5 to d4 also you can come knight to f7 in such a position bishop g2 i played knight to c8 well this was my plan yeah like to castles i can play uh, nc b6 with the idea of playing a4 so she went uh, rook a d1 and i put my king to c7 and now she she played rightly f4 which is to open up the position because she is ahead in development she thought she should open it up by the way a big shout out to mayur mahajan who contributed i don't know i made some settings today that anyone who contributes via super chat will uh, get flashed on the screen did that happen actually i didn't know i i didn't see it uh if if you if you did see it please let me know shrikant naik amnuje says d4 d6 d5 you mean okay just uh, break from this you mean this move <laughs> i did not think about it but logically speaking e6 seems good uh, c6 seems decent 
also e5 seems okay i mean there are many possibilities just moving the same pawn twice doesn't look like the best idea i would say breaking it with c6 also looks good and then next move breaking it with e6 possibly ah okay so uh, nothing came on the screen fine So, coming back to the position where f4 was played, uh, I first gave a check, king h1, and I took ef, and she took back gf, and I played rook h8, and, and you can see like this position is, is really pretty nice for black, he can bring his pieces in the center, there is some weaknesses down here, you can always put your bishop to f5 or g4. And there's really not many prob uh, much problem, you know. I went back, she played knight f2, and now finally I got in a4 with a lot of counterplay. Knight d3, bg4, bishop f3, takes, takes, ab, ab, and now knight to c5, takes, takes. With every exchange, you can see that black's position got better, his pieces are well placed. And his rooks are ready to enter the position at any point while white is okay. I mean white has nothing much to boast about. Rook a d8, e5 takes on d1, knight d1 and now rook d8. Uh, here rook d3 was, was a nice move for me but I played f5, she went e6. King d6, bishop g7, king e6 and black still maintained an edge and later on I managed to win this game. My point is that after d4, d5, c4, e6, all that I needed to do after the queen exchange was first protect the pawn, then put my bishop on e6, then put my knight on d7, put my pawn on c6 and then play on the queen side and I think if I had gone knight h6, knight f7 or knight f5, knight d4, this would have been a great position. So that was the first game that I wanted to talk about. Just giving you some ideas uh, because you may get such positions often in your games. Okay, one more game which happened uh, very recently with me. This was uh, against... Yeah, not this one. Uh, yeah, this is one of the games that I played with d4, d6. Let me see which are the other games uh, that I had prepared. Let me get it out for you. Yeah, I want to first cover d4, d6, c4 before going on to d4, d6, knight f3. Yeah, this is Siddharth Venkatesh, who is, this is just a rapid game uh, and Siddharth is a player from Mumbai and he played d4, d6, c4, e5 and he played d, e here. By the way, if your opponent plays d5, it might be a good idea to continue with f5. I think this is a good position. You put your knight on f6, maybe g6, b, g7 and uh, yeah. You get a perfectly fine position. Okay, so he took and most of the times, you know, players like to take because if you take, they are like, I can break the castling, but actually it's not good. Shivam Singh, Sagar, I just came here after seeing your video, what stopped me from becoming a GM, much love and respect. Your father rightly said in the video. There's only one Sagar Shah. I hope you get the revenge with some way soon. <laughs> Shivam, thank you so much. Uh, I also hope, but it's uh, more not like revenge, but I hope I get a, another game with him. He was saying that we will have it like in um, kind of a live game so that a lot of people can follow it. That would be nice. Okay, so Siddharth played the move E3. And I... I went uh, bishop e6, 
by the way the pre previous game that uh, i i played was against olga jasenko you know that was the game knight f3 now what's the move that i should make here any suggestions from the last game what should black play here Piyush Botra d4 d6 e4 is something we'll cover later. Uh, Shashank, the reason I brought the other knight is because the knight on d7 is very nicely placed covering the c5 square. You know, uh, usually you don't want to move that. While the knight on g8 is doing nothing, so I got it from e7 to c8 to b6. I like the knight on d7. It's very, very useful. Yeah, very good everyone is absolutely right f6 is is the correct move i did play it he went b3 and then now i played c6 and he played bishop a3 once again uh, exchanging pieces like this is not a great idea takes takes knight d7 long castles king c7 knight b1 and now black to move what would you play here well there are there are several good moves but let's see if you can come up with what i did black to move and also something that you learned in the last game Yes, Gita Ritesh, you are absolutely right. In fact, uh, all those who say knight at 6 or knight e7 also good move. Absolutely no problem. But I went a5. I like this move. Sahil Bhatt, practical thinking, Divya P, Leo Chess World, Baku Choku. Yes, that's the move that I played. a5. I want to play a4 and create some play here. He went knight c3. I went knight e7, he played bishop e2, uh, and now I went knight c8. Again, trying to put my knight here on b6 and look for a4. bd3, knight to c5, bishop c2, and now uh, g5. This is quite a common one. Uh, I could also begin with, say, something like h5 or knight d6. All of these moves slowly and steadily you know i have control over the center i have an idea of playing a4 at any given point and then i will slowly start expanding on the queen side king side and i'll you know put pressure on black you will say on white you will say how should black win the way to win is not like you will have a specific plan you just keep improving the position you move your rook here perhaps if required you play this forward you bring your rook back to the center you bring it here kind of keep maneuvering and your opponent will will kind of collapse at some point like here 94 uh, was not a good move because of bishop 94 bishop e4 and now what should black play it's not so difficult it's just the space that was left behind by the opponent what should black play Yeah, A4, exactly. Practical thinking, Raman Chandrakar, absolutely right. King B2. I went Knight D6. Bishop C2. And in such positions, often A3 is a good move. Because then you are able to fix these pawns and also attack the king. H5 was played in the game. I didn't play A3. Knight D2. Internet is okay. Okay, let's see my Y5 is Y5 is back, says my wife. Uh, and I'll try to switch it on. So maybe you'll experience a bit of... Okay. I think uh, everything is back on track and you can hear me well. If you can, let me know. 
G3 is definitely not a great idea but you know uh, at some point when the opponent doesn't have too many options what to do like if you're going to play h3 this could become a weakness in the end game these pawns you don't play i'm going to push h3 and create some weaknesses there so in general it's not easy to respond i played bishop g4 once again feeling the position forcing f3 coming back this is actually an art you know you go you weaken something you come back and you don't really think what to do next you wait for your opponent ah he played 94 see he buckled under pressure you take then you push f5 so basically sometimes letting the opponent putting the ball back in opponent's court is also a good idea so rook a g8 was a nice move now i have two rooks uh, quite aggressively posted he played rook d g1 i went g4 fg rook g4 gh and uh, here after takes rook f1 rook g2 it already started to become clear that uh, it's black who is in the driver's seat i won a pawn and later on won the game so this was i think a typical game in this opening you just play calmly coolly don't try to hurry and you you win the position i mean it's nothing like there is a clear win or something but you just play you enjoy playing okay does anyone have any questions thank you so much 1306s jain for your kind words uh who else do, do you have any questions related to d4 d6 c4 e5 d e d e queen d8 i think if not if you have understood what to do we can move on i mean it's it's nothing is precise or anything but just you play bishop e6 pawn to c6 and f6 knight d7 king goes to c7 knight can go to h6 f7 or e6 e7 bishop can be developed at c5 b4 wherever appropriate you can start pushing your king side pawns you can start push, pushing your queen side pawns rooks are nicely positioned uh, I am being very very optimistic about black's chances but it's just the kind of the opening that I like. Okay. No, it dropped a pawn omka so Yeah, okay. Once d5 is clear, let's let's go to the next line which is d5 was suggested by someone uh, i think this is a playable move although i won't delve in too deeply because i think f5 is just okay i mean you can go knight f6 g6 bg7 and then castle and you get a fine playable position maybe white can go for e4 line here which is a pawn sacrifice but say after fe4 knight c3 knight f6 bishop g5 i think uh, maybe knight d7 knight e4 bishop e7 black is already doing fine he will castle and he will get a normal position you know takes takes seems okay kushal chess says what if white plays e4 c4 setup and when black plays a5 play knight a4 and long castle yeah it's possible i mean i would if if you go with your knight to a4 then i have my knight on d7 if i can put king c7 and then exchange these two knights i can always try for a4 break over there let's uh, get another game I, I wanted to look at also here knight f3 because this is quite a important move here you have two ways of playing it one is knight d7 which i find to be a bit passive it's like the old indian you you play your knight here but i think e4 is just makes so much more sense here in this position e4 and then uh, knight to g5 f5 and there are i mean 
several games here uh, i would i would uh, request all of you to look at few games in this position i don't know uh, ivanchuk has played this bologan has played this many strong players in fact bologan likes to play this a lot black pieces so let me just get a couple of games of bologan and add it to today's homework so you can have a look at that at home well in general i mean the the strategy of black is not uh, too different like i can just give you an example of one game which is rakmano versus bologan rakmano is a very solid 2600 plus gm and bologan as we know is is a world class grandmaster who's won dortmund in the past aeroflot open as well so g3 bishop e7 knight h3 knight f6 bishop g2 you play c6 keep it flexible knight d7 sometimes knight can also go from a6 to c7 you go knight d7 f3 knight b6 is a nice move attacking c4 b3 and now d5 everything is solid a4 here maybe a5 is is a nice move fixing the structure and uh, yeah this is i think this is already slightly better for black what can he do like let's think i play e4 you go knight g5 i play f5 what do you do let's say you go knight c3 i want to attack you with uh, bishop e7 possible bishop e7 but also possible here is to play a c6 move i like this move c6 uh, say you go knight h3 with the idea of knight f4 you play bishop e7 g3 and now knight f6 castles and you get you get to the same kind of a setup you either play on knight to a6 to c7 or you play knight d7 to knight b6 look for d5 if possible if not stay flexible again playable position i am not uh, recommending this line as a winning weapon or no line with black against good play is actually a winning weapon uh, but you know you if you get an equal position this is pretty good uh omkar says i love these openings where you give up the center and then make white miserable afterwards cause he can't handle the center yeah sometimes i mean it's just kind of a mindset so nimzo indian mindset is more like classical if you're going to play here i'm playing in the center i'm playing with all my pieces nicely this d4 d6 is not more is more kind of how do i put it more like i want to trick you kind of a feeling i want to uh, not take the center slowly i will so i think we covered c4 quite well with e5 let's look at knight f3 now and i think if you play d4 d6 against good players chances of you facing knight f3 is higher by the way just one small thing if c4 e5 there's one line which is very popular which is knight to c3 yeah shrikant uh, you are right there's not much theory it's more like thinking over the board uh, and this takes takes i've played this with white as well this position the idea is that you put your queen on d2 then you play b3 bishop b2 you play g3 bg2 and you get a very good kind of a solid position but i think uh, this line there is a clear drawback uh, which is that white is slow you know he moves his queen up then goes back and this gives black chance to equalize like knight f6 let's say uh, now if you go e4 
I think in such positions, it's already a good idea to play g6 because you see all these dark squares are slightly weakened. So putting a bishop on this diagonal would be a good idea. Like this. Uh, and if he plays say g3, then I would go for bishop e6, b3. And now what's the move that black should make? Let's see if you can find out. Let's see if all of you are awake. Today is uh, like a lot of talking done by me, less questions. So let me see if you are all awake here. Black to move. Justin Gardner. Hi, welcome Justin. Says you are somehow finding 25th hour in the day again. Hats off to you. Looking forward to seeing you at the FIDE online trainer seminar soon. Justin, yes. Thank you and... Uh, FIDE online trainer seminar had so many registrations yesterday last day. I think we had some 30 odd registrations just yesterday. So huge number of people. I think nearly 75 people are going to attend it. Going to learn from some of the legends of the game like Yusupov. Um, who else? Uh, Motilev, Sokolov, Ye Juang Chuan, uh, Chinese GM. And uh, there are so many good um, Thomas Luther, uh, Dejan Boshkov, and there's one more guy, you know, six people, and yeah, that's me. So, <laughs> well, but I won't be teaching chess, I would be mainly teaching more about how to use chess base as a trainer. So, that's the point. Yes, all those who said a5, not bad, it's a playable move, but I don't see the point of it because after bishop g2, I think white is slightly better. The best move, of course, and without any doubt, is d5, which gives black almost almost a winning position. Why? Because after, say, cd, knight d5, now there's a threat of bishop b4. This is very irritating. Like, if you play bg2, I'll go bishop b4. You have to play bishop b2, and now I will put more pressure on this position with queen to f6. And black is pushing really hard. I think black is close to winning here. Uh, you may have to take bishop d5, bishop d5. When uh, this is very good, you can't take on d5 because the knight on c3 is hanging. Uh, and if you play, say, something like rook c1 here, then after long castle, it's all over. That's what I'm talking about. White is slow and black must take his chance to create play. That's why the move g3 is actually pretty poor shouldn't play g3 uh, maybe another possible move is knight f3 but not the best spot for the knight let's say something like bishop e6 e3 e3 makes sense e4 then we know already like g6 bg7 the bishop will be well placed if he plays pawns on e4 and c4 so e3 and now uh, you can play d5 cd knight d5 and i think black has solved almost all of his opening problems i remember uh, i actually played two games with this system with white and in both the games i got a very nice position maybe my opponents didn't really play well let me just pick out the game it was one was against Hojatova. Yeah, I was white. Black was Aideen Hojatova. She is a very talented uh, player from Azerbaijan. And uh, quickly, because I think you may face this system sometimes. D4, D6, C4, E5, Knight, C3, ED, Queen, D4, Knight, C6, Queen, D2. And yeah, she played g6 here. Maybe not the best. That's the reason why. You know, once you play g6, I played. She 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 spent time on actually not making the best moves. And once I'm able to get bg2, I really have uh, no problems. I think now the best move was knight f3 when white is slightly better. Uh, the main point being that if bishop f5, as was played by Mamediaro against Erwin Lamy, the best move for white here is, 
I want you to think because this was I think a new move at that point and gave white a clear advantage so white to move ah oh, there's a lag I, I think the lag is okay maybe now no lag yes so yeah very good Prathamesh Divekar fantastic fantastic Haider Yasmin you are right you know a lot of players would play castles here but then after 94 black is able to get kind of an equal equalish position like this exchange knights but the right move is not castles but knight h4 as was played by Erwin Lamy uh, and then after bishop e6 just castles you are not able to get the move d5 in because there are pieces controlling it and this is a very favorable position because rook can go to c1 other rook can go to d1 you can play e4 f4 lot of possibilities for white okay i think uh, that's the reason why I, I would recommend here to start with knight f6 and if your opponent plays g3 you know already to go bishop e6 followed by d5 if he plays b3 then uh, I have a feeling that a5 is definitely possible once again the reason is that I can go a4 knight a4 and d5 so you try to look at how d5 is possible in such positions say cd now you go rook takes a4 if d uh, cb then knight e4 with the idea of bishop b4 that's the entire point you are uh, black is winning completely winning so this this plan of a4 deflecting the knight and playing d5 is also to be kept in mind I think that just about just about clears uh, d4 d6 c4 move now let's go to knight f3 i think one of my favorite games in knight f3 is this game uh jerel thakur dine who's white versus myself um i'll tell you about a story of this game it was like Amruta and I went to play the Leiden Open uh, in, in Netherlands and over there uh, it started the tournament started off quite poorly for both of us and in between there was a rest day and after the rest day uh, we both went to the city of uh, oh I'm just forgetting what what's yeah Amsterdam and then we, we, we roamed around the city a bit and we saw, we cycled around and then we came back. We were refreshed and we said for the second half, we'll try to play as objectively as possible, not try to take too much stress about winning. And so we began, you know, the second half was, the, this was the first game. So I played d6, my opponent played knight f3 and I was very happy to play f5. Can anyone tell me why I was happy to play f5? Let's see, how many of you are alert? Here. Yeah, all those who are getting a lag, just refresh the browser, it should be okay. Anyone, can you tell me why was, was I very happy to play F5? It's not an easy one, you have to be alert to what I said. Well, control over the e4 square is one reason. Stopping e4, yes, chess wise. Yeah, 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 exactly. Justin Gardner got it. Josephine Gita got it. Very nice. Of course, I stop e4. That's the chess reason. Haider Yasmin also is right. Um, the reason why I. I like this was because I got to play the Dutch defense. This is known as the Dutch defense and that too in Dutch uh, in the place Netherlands. 
which is known as Dutch. So I played the Dutch defense in Dutch. I have actually done this in several places. When I was in France, I played the French defense. Uh, when I was uh, my first game in London, when I went to England, I played one C4, the English opening. So that's <laughs> that is what I, I like to do sometimes, just play what is there. Although I never played the Budapest Gambit when I was in Budapest. But my opponent did play the Vienna system when we played in Vienna. Sometimes it f feels unreal. Yeah? yeah, you're learning all these openings and then you actually go to those places where... Uh, those names of the openings are set about like Catalan. I played at the Catalan circuit in Nedal, uh, in uh, Spain, so that's nice. Okay, so g3 was played. I went knight f6, he played bishop g2, and this is the most common way. If you're going to play the Dutch, your opponent is going to fianchetto most of the times. So you go uh, g6. I like the Leningrad system c4 g7 castles castles and knight c3 and more often than not you will reach this position where you will have few options one of the main options is queen e8 here the other one is i think uh, c6 which is what i i would recommend you to play is the most flexible move in this position you are not uh, kind of determining whether you want to play e5 or whether you want to play knight a6, a5. There's so many possibilities. I like to keep it flexible. Now, after c6, white has many ways to continue. The main move is d5. Other option is to play b3. You know, this is more solid way to play chess. And uh, yeah, we can we look at this. But okay, d5 is what my opponent played and here uh, I, I had prepared the move and I went for e5. This is the correct way to respond and I think white must take. Otherwise, black has this nice center here. So he took, I took with the bishop attacking the pawn on c4. I was thinking my opponent will defend his pawn somehow on uh, c4. And he played the move queen to d3. Actually, in this position, uh, the move which I knew was uh, b3. And uh, well, I didn't want to play knight e4 because after knight takes e4, taking a1 would be a mistake, I think. Uh, just knight into d6 with a good position for white. The bishop will then come to a3 or even f4. And somehow white has excellent chances. Uh, but knight a6, this is what I like more in this position. Bishop f4 is not possible. Knight h5 is coming. Then attack on c3. And yeah, next move you can go knight c5. Play this position. It's, it's an interesting system. Okay, so... He played queen d3. And here I went uh, knight a6, which is not a good move. I should have played rook e8. Here. And computers also mentioned knight d7 with the idea uh, that if you take on d6, I can pluck the pawn on c4. So, but what's wrong with knight a6? Uh, bishop f4. And here I was very much wanting to make knight c5 work but then he just takes the pawn and gets a better position but rook e8 is definitely a possible move bishop d6 knight e4 bishop e5 knight b4 and it's a mess complete mess um not going to go into it i actually played in the game knight e8 which is quite passive and when he played knight g5, here, I played knight c5. So this, sometimes you give up this bishop, if you can, let's say, knight e6, knight e6, and black is okay. I mean, I'm threatening to take the piece here. If you go back, I may play knight f6 or queen e7. Next, and I have a playable position. My knights can control e4 square. So queen e3, 
and here uh, I managed to tick a pawn. I think queen e3 was a bad move. Uh, rook f d1, queen b6, good move. b3, bishop f7, rook a c1, uh, knight e6, good move. Because after uh, knight into e6, I have queen e3 and bishop e6, but he took queen into b6, a b6, knight takes, bishop takes, bishop takes, knight takes, rook takes. Uh, I went king f7 and you can see that in this position although material is equal white is utterly lost uh, first of all I can always take here and take the pawn on a2 secondly b5 is going to make these pawns very strong this bishop is very passive hitting on this c6 kind of a granite like structure so he went knight a4 and I think I made a decent move here, which was rook f d8, rook d1, takes, takes, bishop f8. Even b5 was very strong, but I played bishop f8, rook d2, b5, knight b6, because knight c3, then bishop b4 is very strong, so knight b6, rook a6, knight d7, bishop b4, and now rook into a2. Knight e5, king f6, knight d3, bishop c3. Yeah, well, we can go through this entire game, but it was clear by now that I am completely winning. And now here, he resigned the game. So, idea of this entire system is to play d4, d6, knight f3, f5, put your knight on f6, g6, bg7, castle, put your pawn on c6, and then... We try for e5 break somehow and you get a good good position. It's it's the classical Dutch. Okay. Thank you so much for your contribution. Uh, Lance Rangel who says Naka is the best. Surely Nakamura is great. He is doing some great streams these days uh, and following him is, is really nice fun. Uh, I'm just going to see one more game uh, in d4, d4, d6, knight f3, f5. This is something that I, I just developed over the years. Like It was not like I prepared it very thoroughly. The point is that after d4, d6, for many years I was trying to think what should I do? Should I play bishop g4 here? Should I play g6 here? Should I play knight f6? But then they all like bishop g4 I did not like so much because I have to many times give up my bishop for the knight. Not that it's a tragedy but I didn't like it. And secondly, uh, when I played knight f6, more often than not transposed into the king's indian and this was not a part of my repertoire uh, i used to play the names also therefore i began playing the dutch and now uh, let's look at uh, one more game here this was my game against atul atul dahale is my good friend And I played this at in Mumbai, some rating tournament. So he went uh, d4, I played d6, he played knight f3, I went f5, g3, knight f6, bishop g2, g6, and we quickly reach the same position. But here instead of castles, he went queen b3. I castled nonetheless, I'm not afraid of c5, so I, will, I can always play king h8. Or even I think uh, d5 is possible here you know it's quite possible so he went knight c3 I played c6 castles and I went king h8 anyway here he played rook d1 I went queen c7 I just remember that uh, 
usually white should black should play for e5 break so he went c5 which i felt was a little bit too soon maybe d5 was the correct way to play and then i was thinking if i can play e5 here but uh, maybe it's not the best idea because after d e bishop e6 bishop f4 suddenly too much pressure here so instead of this uh, c5 was played here i managed to play d5 um, not the best move i can take bishop f4 queen b6 and black is doing okay you know this this is what i should have played okay let me take a short break right now it's too much of heavy content um, if you have any any questions uh, first let me know so that i can answer them before going further in the game Vidit was fun earlier today. Note to everyone: mute the mic when receiving a dart at home. Yeah, today morning it was Vidit on the stream, and Vidit was scolded by his mother for waking up too soon. You know, no matter even if you are a super GM, you should be waking up. You should be sleeping on time and taking good rest. That's what mothers do. Shashank says, "Looks like you are doing some sleep sacrifice." Not really. Actually, I, I just realized that talking too much is tiring, you know. It's like talking, talking. So I, I like taking breaks. Should take some break from talking. Yeah, thumbnail story. Thumbnail, actually, uh, there's no story as such, but it's actually a place in Greece. It's Paliora. And uh, it's an island at uh, in Greece, beautiful place actually. And there are two coasts, like two sides. One is where you have the sandy beach with the sand, and on the other side you have the stony or the rocky beach. And just like one kilometer separates the two. Uh, it's a beautiful place. P A L E O C H A R A. Paliora. I think you should. Look at that. Yes, Pratamesh on 30th May there is a tournament, there is a free tournament on chess base but I think the entries are already over like 500 entries we received it in a day. Sumit says d4, d6, knight f3, knight d7 is playable. Yeah, that's what I discussed like this might be a bit too passive, but it's playable. Leads to uh, some kind of uh, Indian defense, you know, uh, this old Indian kind of bishop e7, castle. It's a playable position. Practical thinking when will we ha have the next chess base India online tournament? I think it's on the 30th. Just check our website chessbase.in. You will find more information uh, How are you developing the knight to b8 you mean in this position? I think I'm going to keep it flexible for now and sometimes knight could go to d7 sometimes to b8 uh, to a6 it's quite possible you know the problem with when you put your push your pawn to f5 and you develop your knight to d7 is that this square becomes very weak i want to, sh I want to tell you a interesting story actually here might be a good time uh, this game uh, happened in uh, in Indonesia let me see if I can pull up that game yeah this is the one I will tell it will remind you as to why you shouldn't be eager to develop your knight to d7 when uh, you have a pawn weakness on e6 square 
So this was my game against Mitra Hejazipur. She is a talented player from Iran. And I was black. And I, this is a normal system in the Catalan. I was playing normally. She went, uh, I played 9h5, she went back. And here I could have come back, maybe she would have repeated or maybe she would have played bishop b2. But she, I played f5 and then she went a4 and here after a lot of thought, I played the move knight f6. And then uh, I just uh, made the move and she came to the board, I think she was away. And then she saw and her eyes lit up and uh, my eyes lit up and what was wrong? What What's happening? Can anyone tell me? White to move. Navirat Nagesh says, Yesterday I saw a video that what stopped me from becoming a GM. Very inspiring personality. Changed a lot after looking your video. Really a great person who has been struggle a lot for something. Thank you. I don't think I've struggled a lot yet. But well, there's a lot of things to do here. I'm an underrated player and I was just beating an IM but I didn't have much experience and I lost the game. Well, that's normal, uh, Sagar. It's very common to get into a better position and lose. The important thing is not to get tensed when you're winning. Just keep making the best moves. That's the most important thing. Okay, bye Jyotisha. Yes, exactly. Knight g5, as rightly pointed out by all of you, I just blundered this pawn. <laughs> and at the end of it, there's no way you can save it. It's one of those bad moments. So let's come back to the game. Uh, after rook d1, queen c7, c5, I think I should have taken dc. Bishop f4 and queen b6 as we discussed. But I played d5. He played bishop f4. I went queen d8. Bishop b8 was not a great move because I don't know what he was planning. Played knight d7, knight d5. I played knight d7. He took, I took. And now after e3, I played e5. And I think black is already better. I went on to win the game uh, quite easily. But, you know, somehow White's play was not the best. Taking on b8 and then knight e5 was not the, great, not the greatest of ideas. Maybe just queen c2 with the idea of b4, b5 makes sense. Okay. So, do I have more games? Uh, second. Yeah, this is the position. Uh, I'm, I was. We, we are looking at Dutch games, but just trying to look at more games here. Yeah, the, the other game which I wanted to show you was my game against Mithil Asgaukar. This is a game that I think I lost. Yes, this was in a rapid tournament. But it had nothing to do with the opening. The opening was really good. I played d4, d6, knight f3, f5, g3, knight f6, bg2, bg6, castle, bg7. And now he played b3, which is also a very common move. I played castles. He played bishop b2. And now I went c6. So my idea is simple. Just develop with knight f6, g6, castle. And then put your pawn to d6 and c6. Hope for getting uh, e5 break. I mean that's what you are looking for. If you don't get it, then just play normal chess. Maybe knight a6, knight c7. Or you can play a5, a4. Try to get the e5 break in. Sometimes you can also do knight e4, bring the other knight to f6. 
Okay, he went knight bd2. And here, uh, I think the main move is knight to a6 and also a5 is very common. But I went knight e4, which was quite a surprising move. He played c4. Uh, and I played queen a5. I think, in general, queen a5, queen c2, take, take, uh, and e5 is, I thought that I would get a good position. Usually, the queen coming to a5 is a common idea in this line because it attacks here and it also defends the e5 pawn. So keep this in mind. He went c5, which was a good move by my opponent. I played ed. He played knight c4. I played queen c7. He played bishop a3. Queen b5, bishop d6. Rook d8, bishop e7, rook d7. And I think uh, here already white has a small edge. Uh, at least, I mean, sorry, a good edge. And uh, later on, I went on to lose the game. I'm an exchange down. So this didn't work out so well opening wise for me But I think uh, knight e4 is not something that I would recommend Maybe better is to just play a5 here Because we know we want to create some play here uh, If he goes c4 You can play a4 And then he plays queen c2 mm. What is it that you can do? You know, there are so many different options here. Maybe knight a6 is what you can play. The knight will be well posted either to jump here or to knight to c7. And uh, yeah, this position is playable, fighting position. Or you can just, instead of playing a4, just develop the knight here with knight a6. And once again, you, you have a fine position, you know, knight a6, queen c2, knight b4, queen c1, bishop d7, uh, a3, knight a6, and uh, yeah, just play this stuff here, a4 could be an idea, queen c7. The, the way I want you to play this opening is less theory, but more kind of understanding. Once you play... And try to look at some more games through chess base and mega database that would be very useful for you. Uh, I think we have some idea about d4, d6 now and in general we can just recap a bit that if your opponent plays c4, you go for e5, the, the taking this and taking the queen makes no sense, you will have a good position, I mean makes sense, many of your opponents will do it but you know that it's completely safe for black. Uh, knight c3 is what we analyze, you take, take and play really actively with trying for bishop e6, d5, or if b3 is played, then a5, a4. Uh, and also if e4 is played, then you go for the g6 lines here. So that is d4, d6, uh, c4, e5. If knight f3, then you play e5, knight g5, f5, sorry, f5, with bishop e7 and knight f6. That's one of the plans. Uh, and the other move here uh, we looked at is d5, then you go f5, and then knight f6, g6, bg7, and castles. <sighs> Lastly, uh, we looked at knight f3, and I am recommending you to play the Dutch. And my suggestion to you is study the positions after knight f6, g6, bg7, castles, and c not c5 but c6, and play those positions. Okay, that is my suggestion to you. I hope you understand this and you try to play. If you have any questions, please write in the comment section or write to me at chessbaseindia at gmail. Uh, I would take care of that. Uh, I would reply to you. Uh, all those who want to get more games about specific openings, try to get yourself 
mega database uh, this is really a very nice way to improve your game so here you can see whichever position like say if you are looking here i click on reference then this is chess base and i'm using mega database in it all the games are loaded i can just click on any one and i can uh, study it what happened there and so on so i have put the link of how you can get chess base and mega database in the description so try to get your hands on that okay before we leave about playing a game online just let's see if someone can play d4 against us and maybe we'll be able to get some interesting chess i'll play three plus two i don't like to play without increment i'm not so good at it perhaps uh, and so let me see let me activate formula so that i get someone okay it's fine let's see aha vesna 2 let's see if she plays or he plays d4 nice shall we play the nims or no we'll play d6 what we learned today c4 let's play e5 this is nice yeah you you learn something and then you put it to use immediately ah it took we took let's let's see if we can convert this end game i want you guys to play along with me let's see if we can beat him knight c3 uh, c6 i don't like bishop e3 so much bishop e6 long castle i'll just put my king on uh, yeah but this is bad yeah you can play bishop b4 And now you must either long castle yeah long castle looks okay bd2 i want to play a5 keep the threat ah a3 i don't think we should exchange maybe bishop e7 f3 knight d7 e4 this weakens the d4 square tremendously uh, how do we take advantage of it let's first place our bishop on c5 earlier i was afraid of any four now there is no any four threat so it looks okay king goes to c7 also this Pawn is quite weak here. Knight uh, knight e7. G four that that makes somehow more weaknesses in the position. How about attacking with h5? g5 knight g6 i like it i like the position for also i can go h4 stopping knight g3 makes complete sense bishop c2 knight g6 Let's see one mm -hmm. oh, no. rook f d eight makes sense. I want to keep my rook on a eight. I don't know, I just feel somehow that would be good. King e two b d four. Now I'm gonna put my knight here. knight d3 maybe it's time to exchange a pair of knights okay takes takes ah 
I want to double now on the d5. That would be nice. But I should be careful of knight a4 ideas. Ah, bishop e3. Should we exchange? Or should we play knight f4 check? I like this move. Because if he takes, I can take and his dark squares are very weak somehow in the position. a4 looks horrible. What if bishop b4? I don't see a move for it. Bishop b4? Where does he go? Knight b1? Yeah, doesn't look doesn't look appetizing at all. Maybe bd4 was just much stronger. Yeah, bishop d4. But also bishop b4 looks so good. A knight b1 is kind of forced and then uh, how should we create play g5 is a weak pawn ah knight d5 that's just a pointless sacrifice e d He can't take yet because rook d2 is coming. So we can play a small little move I think here which is g6 to exchange of the bishops. Looks pretty good. Rook d1, bishop f5. Gf. Yeah, now just rook here. Oh, but that's a free rook. Resigns. Nice game. Nice game. I hope you kind of understood the ease with which black won. Yeah, that was cool. Let's analyze the game like always. Not missing any opportunity to learn something. Uh, here. Oops, not this. I wanted to analyze this game. Home, start analysis, copy, and control new, paste. Okay, let's see. Did you guys enjoy the game? Were there any suggestions coming in? Okay, I think it was a good game. It was a good game. Uh, yeah, let's just quickly run through the opening. I like this. Okay, bishop e3 makes just no sense. Yeah, like bishop e6, b3, bishop b4, a5 I think is okay. Uh, here I was a little bit skeptical about bishop c5 because I didn't like knight e4, but it was okay. Bishop e7, f3, knight d7. Okay, bishop c5, maybe no need, just play king c7. Uh, g4, I think h5 is a nice move. g5, ah, I have a very powerful move here. The engine shows here some analysis done automatically by play chess. Shows bishop h3 was very powerful. The idea being bishop g2 to win this rook. I don't know why bishop c2, why not bg2? Is it because of knight a4 perhaps? Yeah, perhaps. But okay, I can also go back, but then there is bishop into a5. Interesting. I should check this out. Well, well, if we had a lot of time, I would have analyzed it more depth, but no, this is winning. Yeah, bg2 looks good. But anyway, bishop h3 was the best move here. I went h4 because I wanted to play knight g6. Uh, I didn't like him coming h4, so I said, okay, let me first play h4. 
bishop c2 knight g6 knight c1 rook d8 knight king e2 bishop d4 knight d3 and yeah here i i just played this maybe it's it was already okay to play knight f4 check and force him to take c5 takes takes you see this weakness combined with this weakness and this everything is weak and i think this was a nice move here uh, knight f4 takes takes a4 and yeah bishop d4 was stronger but also bishop d4 was not bad knight d5 i was thinking of knight b1 and then uh, maybe just playing rook d7 rook d1 uh, take bishop takes and then rook h8 this was my plan uh, here and then go rook h5 and pick up this pawn when you have won an important pawn and get into the position okay knight d5 wasn't best cdd and i like this next move i was calm i was concentrated and i, I was able to find this move because if you take i'm playing rook d2 so you play rook d1 and then i'm exchanging piece up and then of course this is just a free rook okay guys uh, i hope that someday i can play with you all of you uh, and uh, i think overall this was a decent game at least much decent than my game yesterday with uh, some my which i lost um, yeah but just do this this is what i like about uh, learning new openings study them play online analyze those games learn from them and then move on and i also like you know keep saving these games uh, in my computer in in my chess base by the way i use chess base so extensively um, that i do not feel sad asking all of you to use it or buy it because i know it's so useful so all those who don't have chess base 15 make use of this database management you can save all your games online games in one database preparation in one database whatever you do so many different databases i have and please get them the, the links to purchase them are in the description and if you want say the database of 8 million games then you get the mega database which opens inside the chess base tomorrow we'll get back to bogo indian and queens indian and then perhaps on 29 30 31st we'll take a break because there is a online fide seminar and then we'll join from first but i think tomorrow we'll have the class so until then thank you all for attending thank you for watching i know these sessions are a bit heavy but i think um, they are useful for you okay take care bye bye see you